So welcome to the Pops at NOM. Um, I'm Carlos Soriano. I work in Red Hat, uh, basically as maintainer of Nautilus. But uh, to be honest, I spend a lot of time as well, uh, more on the organizational level of NOM as part of the board of directors and, and these kind of things. And recently, I have been uh, the point of contact with GitLab because NOM is reaching to GitLab, and with our partnership. I'm also interested quite a bit in, in the whole experience of developers and users in GNOME. So I, I have been working on kind of like a vision with Flatpak and GitLab to try to make a full DevOps experience for GNOME because before uh, we have been quite bad in keeping with that. Um, so the review is going to be the first part, which is welcome to hell, <laughs> which was what we were doing before, uh, how we were building applications on GNOME the stability and buildability that we had at NOM, reproducibility, um, the project planning that we have, the interaction within design, QA, and users, and there is some fun missing there anyway, the feedback cycle, cycle that we have. Then for, for the tools that uh, help fixing this, which is Flatpak and GitLab, we will see just the basics of GitLab and GitLab CI, and then the Flatpak basics. And then finally, the most interesting part, I think, is when you merge both of them, then you create a full uh, DevOps experience with CI and Flatpak, Flatpak and the reliability, bundles, continuous delivery, and the full new cycle. So how we were building GNOME before? Have you tried ever to build an application in GNOME before? Yeah, 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 yeah I can imagine. <laughs> Uh, so we were using something called GHBuild. GHBuild is just like a script, a big script that it has some prefix for installing applications and some environment variables. That's it. That means that half of the things are on the host, and then half of the things we were building from master. Okay, and there is no versioning. So, for example, to give an example, to build Nautilus, it was uh, 80 modules building from master and it was taking around between four hours and eight hours from scratch that's a lot for an application in gnome um, and you can imagine when you are building 80 modules from master that some of them are not even controlled by gnome it's gonna break it's gonna break so what we were doing for you know fixing this problem before good luck <laughs> Literally nothing. We had nothing before. And this is really a bad experience. Uh, you can imagine for new contributors and for developers, even for people, distributors, designers, this is insane. So for the possibility, uh, basically we had different environments for developers, designers, QA, and users, because developers were using maybe a very updated distro like Fedora, things like this, uh, the latest Fedora, but maybe designers are not. They are using maybe open source or arts or whatever. The same for QA and users. So the problem is that everyone was in its own environment, which makes uh, things quite difficult. I need to keep uh, time. Let me, okay. Because it's my first short talk. I usually do long talks, so I don't want to keep <laughs> uh, very long. Uh, so yeah, I think most of us have seen in the last part in the users that when they come to us and try to file a report, we say, oh, it works for me, right? This is very typical. And this is because they are using different environments, right? And here I, uh, there is something interesting. This was the first, like the, the guide we have for newcomers. And can you see here, I will show you directly on, on the... Um, here, can you see here in big? It is strongly recommended to use Fedora 25. That at that point was the latest, and that's it. We only supported Fedora. Very politically correct, right? For GNOME. <laughs> and I remember uh, Dimstar. I I don't know his. Okay, you. Yeah, you you were not pleased with this, and you were like, "Come on, I, this is not motivating." And I agree. This was not a good experience, and it's really bad. But we had no other choice, and I'm happy that now we have the choice.
then also this goes inside the the of experience so not in flatpak but uh, still uh, we were doing project planning just in the wiki uh, it was just a table with links to bugs nobody was updating it uh, there is no integration and you couldn't query things like the whole short term vision for gnome or long term vision or things like this which is also very bad for distributors like open source um, so ideally what we will have for the interaction between designers, QA, and users is that, for example, designers have mockups and they iterate on them, uh, and they can, they should be able to try work in progress, like in a branch or something. But they are designers, so you cannot make them, you know, build Nautilus 80 modules that probably they are going to fail anyway. Um, they also usually want to see different versions. For example, the development version alongside the system installation. For, for designers, this is very good because they can see, you know, uh, the difference here, if it works, if it doesn't work, and they can iterate on the feedback. And of course, they are either leader or non-technical, so you cannot give them just uh, a script and good luck. And this is the kind of thing we have before, which is, which is Baxilla. So they attach some image or something, there is no inline support for images, there is no way to try out new things in here, not even the implementation for, for the science they do. Uh, so yeah, it was quite bad. So the problem is that everyone was following the same path as the developers, and that's not ideal, right? Ideally, we have early feedback from designers, from uh, users, from QA, that they can try these things just with one click, everything visual, no command line, and that this path is, optimi is optimized for users, QA, respectively, or designers. Okay, let's go to the second part. Uh, so this is what we have until now, quite bad, I think. I, to be honest, I, I cannot imagine now how we have lived in there for so long. I, I, I don't know, I don't know how we did it. But now I will explain the tools that solve these issues, Flatpak and GitLab. So just the very basics of GitLab. It's a tool that it was made from scratch for a type of experience. So that means everything is integrated. What we have before is Paxilla, Sigit, and, and GitBuild, and everything. And now everything is integrated on the same uh, tool. It's very similar to GitHub, if you know uh, GitHub. But it's a, a bit more powerful, and it's free software. Uh, as I said, everything integrated. The whole uh, th theme from idea to design to implementation to continuous integration, QA, continuous delivery, and again, and the full cycle of the post. So that's very good for, for us. Um, and it has support for non-technical teams. And this one is very important because nothing makes me more happy than to see this, which is right now in the Norman GitLab, we have all our teams using the same tool, design, engagement, Ubuntu, Purism, Fedora, Translation, Developer Portal, even the board of directors are using this tool, so everyone is in the same. You can use uh, labels and things like this, the UI is, is quite nice. But okay, the most important part and the technical, let's go to the technical part again, uh, is the CI, it's similar to Travis, if you know it. Uh, it has pipelines, for example, you can have uh, pipelines and stages, so for example, you can have build, test, uh, deployment and review, there are, there are a few of them. You can have artifacts, which is a way to put from the container to, to the public, to, poli to policy something. And there are schedules, so for example, you can do something like, every Sunday I will uh, deploy my application to the users, so they, they will use an update, uh, and you don't have to do anything else. So let's see how is the CI that we do. Uh, no, sorry, this is just a small example. So basically how the GitLab CI works is that you choose a Docker CI uh, image, and then you have the stages, uh, for example, test, and you just run a script, for example, Hugo, which is a generator of uh, static websites, and then you deploy in the pages uh, stage, doing the same, but then you put some artifacts, which is the public folder from the website. And that's it, it's very simple. Uh, this generates a website, uh, a static website in some link. So I think it's quite nice. Uh, it's quite powerful, the, the GitLab CI. And now Flatpak. How much of you are, are know about Flatpak? You know? Okay, most of you, yeah. Um, so probably you know already the basics, but I will do very fast this one. Uh, basically uses container technologies like uh, OS3. 
uh, is unboxed. That means, and it's unboxed by default. If you want, you cannot opt out of that. You can punch holes or make use of portals, which is similar to Android intent. Uh, but yeah, it's a sandbox. You cannot uh, just remove the sandbox system. Uh, it has a consistent environment, which I guess you can start imagining how this fix things that we have talked before, because everyone is going to use the same environment. Uh, it doesn't depend on the host, basically like a container, right? Uh, so it doesn't touch the, the the user installation. It's also version, so you can have uh, SDKs like an Android, for example. So you target a specific version, and it's forward compatible. Uh, so even if you are using a very new distro with a very old application, that's going to keep working. There is nothing uh, that is going to break it. And because of, of, of all of that is cross-distribution. So finally, with this, we can say to Deepstar that the, he doesn't have to worry about newcomers to GNOME, because now they can use open source and contribute to GNOME freely. Um, so just a very basic on how you create a Flatpak uh, manifest, which is what defines your application. I will show you now a Nautilus Flatpak. It's very simple. You have the first section, this one. Can you see well there? Yeah, it's fine. Um, the first section is just describing the the application name, then the the target, like um, it's using master and the SDK, which is known. There are Caddy, there are Electron, there are others, and we put some tags. And then we describe the actual application, uh, the dependencies that are not in the SDK. Nautilus has actually not many. It's Exif, Gexif, which is a wrapper of the first one, Tracker, Nomatoire, and Nautilus. And that's it. This is how you build Nautilus. It's as simple as that. You do Flatpak, Builder, Build, this, done. And how thin of this is that we have go from the four hours, within four hours, eight hours, as I said before, to six minutes. Now anyone can go to non builder, for example. Uh, you open non builder, you select Nautilus. In six minutes, you have Nautilus there running. And it's going to work because it's using this environment that is isolated from the host. I think that's pretty good. That's a really big change from what we had before. And I'm very happy that we have that. So again, uh, since it's reproducible as well and the, the environment is, is consistent, we don't have any issues that we, we talked before, like the versioning or, or breaking because some other module master is, is, is broken or something like this. And now, okay, I have five minutes. Yeah, it's, it's enough, I think. The last part, I think, is the most interesting is when you put Flatpak and GitLab together, uh, basically using the CI, because the CI is the, the year, the, the thing that connects Flatpak with GitLab in a way to create this DevOps uh, cycle. So let's see how we do CI for Flatpak and Nautilus. Well, and Nautilus and, and the whole gnome, actually. Um, so it's quite easy. We have uh, an image that we created is just, I think, a very, very minimal Fedora image, which has the Flatpak SDK install. So if you have the, the SDK install, you don't need to download it, download it every time. We have some variables just for building. And then what we do is Flatpak Builder, and we say to stop on the, on the Nautilus module. So we build all the dependencies. Then, um, yeah, we stop, then we build the actual, the actual Nautilus. We have to do this because we are doing this in branches. So for example, when you create a merge request on, on Nautilus, now you will have uh, the CI triggering, and then it will build whatever is in there. To do that, you have to build whatever the GitLab CI is downloading there, not the actual upstream Nautilus, right? So we stop on Nautilus, then we build what GitLab CI has inside. But everything is done inside the Flatpak environment. Then we install, and then we run the test. And finally, we create a bundle that we will we'll speak about this later. 
But it's quite simple. Then we have some artifacts, which is what we showed to the wall, and it's basically the bundle that we'll see later. Uh, what is that? Some logs, and we say that it expires after 30 days. And then we have some cache, so every build is going to keep this cache. So basically, how, how it looks like is that, for example, you go to pipelines, pipelines, and here you can see all, all the CI for every branch that we have. So you create a merge request, and the CI is triggered. That's quite good, because now what do we have? We have pre-merge, build test, and runtime test. We no longer have the issue about just putting to master something, and boop, uh, GNOME now breaks, and nobody can build GNOME anymore, and things like this, because we had the, these issues before. Now everything that goes on master is uh, passed through the CI. And since the environment is the same as the developers are using, if it's part of the CI, it's going to be buildable for any developer as well. So we already fixed those issues that we talked before. And as I said before, it's quite fast, from, from four hours to three minutes. Now the second part, which for me is the most interesting, and I think is where actually Flatpak makes a difference here, Flatpak together with GitLab, is bundles. So with Flatpak, you can create a containerized uh, bundle, like an application you can download, like in Mathintos, right? And then with that, you can install that and run it. So what we do, for example, here, this is a merge request. I created a branch in Nautilus. I created just for this talk. I modified, uh, I will show to you. Here, can you see the so hidden files here? I modified this label, and I put something in there. I create the branch. I create the merge request. And now here, the CI triggers and creates, uh, test the, makes the test, the build, and then creates this bundle. And using GitLab review apps, which is something for making deployments, we go to the continuous delivery, which is exposing the Flatpak bundle, and it's in this link. So this is just a regular merge request. So we click here. It's downloading here. Double click Nautilus the flat pack. Install. Launch. Done. This is Nautilus Master. This is Nautilus from there, from the merge request. And you can see it here. Hello, open source conference. This is amazing. Now designers doesn't need to build anything. They can just go there and install whatever we have done. We solved the problem. We finally have like a DevOps experience together, you know. And So finally, so what we have here is that we generate installable bundle per merge request. We have parallel installation, so designers can see. <coughs> so you can see the system installation on the left, the, the developer installation on the right. And they can make difference between them. They can provide any uh, you know, uh, feedback they, that they have. And now the last thing is how this goes together. Now you have more or less the, the big overview. Uh, but basically, I will show you a real example. Recently, we had, uh, well, now we fix also with GitLab this short-term vision and long-term vision of GNOME. Now we are using these epic labels, stretch labels, uh, to say like what's the short-term vision of GNOME, the big task. And one of them is the action bar. We, we make a proposal of an, I don't have water, okay, anyway. To make an action bar. So thanks to the Flatpak and GitLab, we had 
around six designers that we never seen before in GNOME. <laughs> just random users, random designers from, from the world that came just to help us uh, with the feedback because they could install this quite easily. So we propose something. Finally, we have, oh, thank you very much. Finally, we have inline support for images. And then with what I did here is that with the designs, the designer put some mockup. And then I create a web branch. Uh, I create, a, sorry, a web merge request. The designer clicks, install. No, I don't like it. Let's do another mockup. You can see here that there are a lot of mockups, a lot of designers, a lot of user providing feedback uh, and mockups. So he was doing another mockup. I created a new merge request. And again, and again, and again. And the iteration was so easy because they just have to install anything. And then finally, the last one, this one, and we merge it. And that's it. And it's the first time that really the designers have been you know, happy to, hey, I can just go here and try things very early on the, on the cycle. So yeah, the last one, the pops, we achieve it. Uh, and this is for GNOME, but actually you can do it for any application. And I think it's very helpful to have this whole cycle of Flatpak plus GitLab. Questions? Okay, thank you very much.